is George Njuguna. Thank you so much for keeping us company from wherever you're listening to us from. My name is George Njuguna. I think I said that. <laughs> and today we are having a very interesting discussion. Let me tell you. Me, I thought I had issues. I <laughs> I have met someone who's gone through the pit. I even don't know whether to call it the pit. Or <laughs> <laughs> I think it's under the pit. <laughs> and and I look at her, she doesn't look like she can go through that life. <laughs> be very honest. Yeah. Her name is uh, Teresa Joroge, right? Yes. Good. Yeah. Welcome to Bloom Radio. Thank you very much. This is where we you. share our stories, mm. we share our testimonies mm. to encourage people. Yes. It may not be necessarily people who are where you are, but there are people who are outside who are listening. Okay. So let me give this uh, background, two scenarios. Number one, somewhere in the 90s, um, my father got arrested mm. uh, illegally. Mm. And uh, it really caused us a lot of emotions. Me and my sister, my brother had not yet been born then. Mm. Um, number two, I had a friend who was my leader mm -hmm. in uh, Christian fellowship mm. and uh, was in the banking industry. And one day I opened the papers mm. and I see her. And I could imagine what is going through her head. Mm. Who is Teresia? Let's start from there. Let's put that story away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to it. But who is Teresia? I look forward to hearing the story. Yeah. So Teresia is a daughter of the Most High God, yes. first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I am a daughter mm -hmm. to my loving parents, okay. a sister. Mm -hmm to my three sisters and my brother. Mm -hmm. And I am a mother of two mm -hmm. uh, lovely world upcoming change makers, mm -hmm. Oma and Uhuru, mm -hmm. my daughter and son. Mm -hmm. um, and I am privileged and honored to lead a social enterprise that I founded mm -hmm. called Clean Start. Mm -hmm. It's now Clean Start Africa. Okay. I am also the convener of a conf an annual conference mm -hmm. that we hold called Beyond the Buzz Africa Conference mm -hmm. and the founding patron mm -hmm. of a movement mm -hmm. called Sisters on the Outside, okay. which is a coalition of formerly imprisoned women in Africa. Ah, yeah. Good. We'll talk about the buzz. And the buzz here don't mean the music that we play. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but it means something else. Mm. And we'll get to that as we build up this story. Um, tell us about your life in general, whatever you want to tell us. Life. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd begin by saying that I am a hopeless optimist mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I have realized that when I look back, mm -hmm. I've always remained hopeful, okay. no matter how the situation presents itself or reality presents itself okay. as deem. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll always try and look for what's the way forward, what's a way out, mm -hmm. how can we make it work. Mm -hmm. um, I have so much optimism and hope. I love Africa so much. I mm. love being African, being Kenyan, mm -hmm. um, because of all the blessings mm. uh, that were the natural, the people, the warmth. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful place. Um, and other than that, I love people, mm -hmm. uh, just to see people perform in their optimal, highest version and levels that God created them to be. Mm -hmm. And um, overall, I would say that I strongly believe that each and every person is in this world mm -hmm. for a divine purpose yeah. uh, to make this world a much better place. And mm -hmm. as a Christian, mm -hmm. to help the world operate as the kingdom of heaven operates. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Divine purpose. Yes. Let's talk about your purpose. <laughs> <laughs> 
my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a very good one. Yeah. Because before I landed in my purpose mm-hmm. and full calling, yeah. I never imagined that the journey there would be so painful. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought, I mean, you end up fulfilling your purpose mm. because it's something that you love. It's something you're passionate about. Mm. Um, and I thought, you know, you would navigate your way around to get to that full place. But mm. over time, as I have continued to um, unravel and open up what my purpose is, because I believe mm-hmm. um, purpose keep unfolding yeah. based on your level it's of like obedience. Yes, yeah. it keeps you know, you unfolding. Keep unfolding it every time. Yes. Yeah. So one thing I've come to learn is that purpose and pain mm-hmm. are very interwined. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I talk about pain, I'm talking about uncomfortable situations. Mm-hmm. Um, every time you have to unfold and get to the next level, mm-hmm. the, you, you need to get out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. get to a discomfort, mm-hmm. and that's how you unravel and mm-hmm. unfold the next mm-hmm. so and you 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 so you've got to be comfortable mm-hmm. with being uncomfortable mm-hmm. so that you really get to the depth of what your purpose is mm-hmm. otherwise the comfort zones don't serve you yeah. well yeah um, they won't unravel what's what really is deep is deep inside you yeah. and i say that because um i always wanted to be a banker mm-hmm. As a firstborn, observing my dad, yeah. who was a career banker for th- three to almost four decades, mm-hmm. um, you know, I would observe him and I'd be like, this career is the solution in the world. <laughs> 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 if you want all your things to be aligned, fall in place, no stress, no pressure. Because I used to really admire how he would just take care of everything, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a small girl, I'd be like, gosh, he's not only my hero, mm-hmm. he performs, he delivers, mm-hmm. he... Like, I was like, this is it. And I would attribute it to, it's because he's a banker. Mm. That's why <laughs> he's being able to be who he is. Mm-hmm. And so, f- when I was a very young girl, I had already decided, you know what, me, I'm going to be a banker, just like my dad. Mm-hmm. And so, because of that, mm-hmm. I thought my life will be so together, mm-hmm. just like I'm seeing my dad's life so together. Mm. But shock on me. I think <laughs> there's so much she wasn't telling me. <laughs> oh, my Number goodness. Number one is that you're people with money. <laughs> But you, you never know that that money is not yours. It's not yours, yeah. and uh, there's just so much he's having to manage, and yeah. uh, just a, just because I saw him carry it so well, mm-hmm. it didn't mean it wasn't tough, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I think those are the parts I didn't know when I was younger. But anyway, I got into banking yeah. uh, finally as I had desired, mm-hmm. and um, served in that banking world for about a decade, mm-hmm. but. The truth of the matter is that as a Christian, I always used to ask, I always used to have unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. For example, I'd always wonder, why is it that in the book of Matthew, God keeps telling us that we need to first seek the kingdom of God? Matthew 6, 33. Yes. And then after you seek, Mm -hmm. then all these other things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. When I was in the banking sector, that command never used to make sense at, at least to me at that particular time because mm-hmm. I was like I'm so overwhelmed by my responsibilities mm-hmm. to the point where I don't have enough time mm-hmm. to spend with him to seek him mm-hmm. you know time with him mm-hmm. time seeking him time serving him like I was just like the pressures of the world mm. are not allowing that to work. Yeah. And I kept wondering, so exactly how do you want this to work? So I'd always feel something somewhere is not right yeah. based on his principles and his word mm-hmm. and how I'm operating in my day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. And I was, and I sought to really search and seek, mm-hmm. how do I align with him? Because mm. if I don't align with him, then mm. that means I'm not living fully. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to live a lie. Yeah. So as much as 
my dream career was satisfying me, mm -hmm. I still had a lot of unanswered questions as far as the divine purpose mm -hmm. is concerned. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> as I continued seeking, following him, um, the unexpected happened. Okay. And when the unexpected happened, I, I was just, you know, um, fulfilling my day-to-day -day obligations mm -hmm. as a banker, mm -hmm. and there was nothing unusual. Mm, okay. There was nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. It was just any other day any that any you've other. come to work, mm -hmm. executed your jobs, mm -hmm. res uh, responsibilities, and day-to-day, -day, mm -hmm. and you call it a day. Mm -hmm. And um, just looking back to that day, mm -hmm. I had journeyed so closely with God, mm -hmm. and I knew him to be my guide, my protector. Mm -hmm. So if, th so there, and there was no way I would do something mm -hmm. that would be detrimental to me, mm -hmm. just based on the fact that he's with me, mm -hmm. and he has. So I have a track record mm -hmm. of who he is. Mm -hmm and how he guides me and how he leads me. Mm -hmm. And so on that particular day, as I executed my responsibilities, there was just no way he would not protect me, cover me. And besides, we have a plan here. We have a pact mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. that is going to help me in my banking career. Yeah. So we've got a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, also, I thought at that particular time. Yeah. So... But wasn't he not really? <laughs> you know, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, now looking back, yeah. I can see for sure. Yes, at that particular minute, mm. I might have thought, where were you when... He, he's abandoned you and everything. You know, when I, when I hit... The, you knew that this was... There was a pothole here. Yeah. I couldn't see the pothole. Yeah. You allowed me to hit this pothole. Yeah. Like, <laughs> at that point when you're hitting the pothole, you're like... Where were you? Omniscient, yeah. omnipresent, <laughs> omni everything. <laughs> Could you whisper to me to go to my left or, you know? <laughs> so you have all these questions. Purpose. <laughs> 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 I tell you, it's uh, your road to purpose. Yeah. It's quite something. But you see, even as you hit that pothole, yeah. it's molding you, mm. even to how you hear him, mm. um, trust him. Yeah. You know, it's really molding you. Yeah. Um, so the unexpected, I'd say, was hitting that pothole. So what happened was that I served a client. Mm -hmm. And after I served this client, we were about 12 of us mm -hmm. because it was a huge transaction. Mm -hmm. And this transaction, um, the, the total amount that we were paying out from the client's account mm -hmm. was 9.9 .9 million. Okay. And that is about 12, 13 years ago. Okay. So it was quite some substantial amount of money. Yeah. Even to date, yeah. you know, when you're talking about close to 10 million shillings, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So we were paying out that money over, it was over a period, the transaction was over a period of about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And very little was cash. O he only took 400,000 Kenya shillings as cash. Mm -hmm. All the rest was being transferred to other accounts. And so the process was complex. Mm -hmm. And it, has, it had to go through a number of bank managers, bank processes for it to end up in the other bank. Mm -hmm. um, now, after we had paid out that amount of money and we continued doing our usual other work mm -hmm. about a month after that transaction yeah the client then goes to another branch mm -hmm. and says where is my 10 million <laughs> now i can laugh <laughs> <laughs> but at that time when he asked that question it was tough like what do you mean didn't you withdraw the 10 million? Mm. No, I didn't. Oh, my goodness. Woo. So the entire bank is now at a frenzy. Mm -hmm. So the 
climbed into it through the money. So where is it? What happened? Mm. And those investigations internally mm -hmm. took almost more than a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, the cashiers were fired immediately. So like, because you're one of the people who handle that transaction, mm. you're now waiting for your fate. Mm. And there's all this um, investigation. There's no paperwork? The, all the, the entire paper trail is there from requesting for the money to the due procedure that was followed because mm. we've got the due diligence we have to follow mm -hmm. to how it was paid out to who authorized all that entire so Process. everyone who handled mm -hmm. was part of the investigation mm. and the entire trail is there yeah. um, so everyone is being questioned mm -hmm. and so that questioning is what took a while because it's not just the bank we work at, mm -hmm. it's also the bank where the money was transferred to, mm -hmm. how it was withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So it was quite complex yeah. in terms of following the process, the process and yeah. the, the, the route the money took. Yeah. And even I couldn't wait to hear what happened. Mm. Who dropped the ball? Mm. What is this about? Mm. It was a very tough time. Mm. A very tough because you don't know. Mm. And all of a sudden you realize that even people around you mm -hmm. can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. And you know, banking is a very um, trust-based operational space. Mm -hmm. Because when I, when I do my part, yeah. you need to do your part. Like mm. you've got to keep covering each other. Mm especially because of the dual authorization. Yeah. So when I authorize my part, mm -hmm. you have to be very keen with your part mm -hmm. and so on and so forth until the funds are fully paid off. And that's why there is all these checks and balances mm -hmm. to make sure that everything is handled well. Yeah. So when you realize something like this has happened, mm -hmm. you automatically bega begin to ask yourself questions like, so who is not covering their where, part mm -hmm. or where where do we have a leakage or a gap yeah all these questions are also going on within you mm -hmm. so you also really want to know yeah. um and it was very it was a very tense time mm -hmm. because you can't even trust the people around you mm -hmm. you don't know who is being fired who is not being fired even for you you don't know there's so much uncertainty. Mm. So it was, it was a very, very difficult period. Mm. Um, but then again, after you've asked God all one million questions, mm -hmm. because you have a track record was with him, um, I, was, I was still very optimistic mm -hmm. because I had had a track record with him mm -hmm. I knew he's got he's me. He's got your back. He's got my back. Yeah. Because he knows me. Mm -hmm. He knows m I did my part right. Mm -hmm. So irrespective of all the uncertainty around me, mm. I mean, me, I know my, me, I know. You're good. As a child of God, mm -hmm. me and him, mm -hmm. we've not come this far to just come this far. He's <laughs> going to get me out of this. <laughs> so that part I knew. Mm. And I really actually drew so much more closer to him. At that point. At that point, because the waves are too high. And so you're like, my God. And you've already started doing your worst case scenarios. Yeah. If I'm fired like so and so, mm. um, God. So how many cashiers were fired immediately? Two. Okay. So like the ones who worked, especially directly in the docket that I was in. But let me ask you. Mm. He took 400. Cash. Cash. Even that one, he said he didn't <laughs> receive it. Yes. Not a shilling. Not a shilling. But we'll, we'll get to that. Okay.